miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And by the way, I am the prophet to the, the church of the angel of the church of Laodicea. The candlestick and the star spoken of in Revelation chapter 120. I am that prophet, okay? We always talk about paganism everywhere else. When was the last time your denomination, I don't care what denomination you're in, when was the last time that the denomination you're in exposed the wickedness and idolatry in there, in, amongst them? Never! When have you ever heard them repent of any idolatry or sin? These denominations that I've mentioned in this, this, this uh, vi video cast, they don't believe in repenting of sin on a corporate level. They don't believe it. Israel, now, Israel was a, a very idolatrous nation, but they did have something called the Day of Atonement. They believed that they, they still had there that they had to repent of sin corporately, not just individually, as a nation. From the high priest on down, that's unheard. You've never seen any denomination on earth that repents of his sin. You've never seen it. And I mean, everybody actually knows what sins in that denomination that they commit. It's unheard of. Unprecedented in modern times. It says here in verse 12, for this cause, the king was angry at verse 4, that's 13. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which has gone forth to slay the men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty? Now, why is he saying that if nobody's being killed? Hmm? Why? Why is the decree so hasty? In other words, you haven't even given us a chance. You know what? You know what that implies? Daniel is saying, now the remember now, the astrologers, the soothsayers, the magicians, all the people that went to theology school, they all said this. God wouldn't even show this to us. And we have no connection to those gods. But Daniel is implying here, hold up, wait a minute. I know a God who will reveal this. I know a God who can. They don't even know a God who can do it. Woo, that's powerful. They don't even know of a God who is able to tell secrets like this. They don't even know a God like that. That lets you know that they are idolaters and they are worthy of the death decree for fiddling around with this, this, this king who has received this vision and dream. They are worthy of death. But, but when you go to the true people of God, you can tell that they got a connection. They're confident in their God. They know he is able to do just what he said he will do. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired the king of the king that he would give him time. Give me time. And that he would show the king the interpretation. He was confident. Not God might do it. He will do it. Woo! None of these other guys really even believe that their God would do it. Wow. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Then Daniel went to his house and made the king known to Haniah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire the mercies of the God of heaven. So Daniel goes here and he, he talks to his companions who are filled with the Holy Ghost too. Oh, 
Oh boy. Good thing Daniel wasn't uh had got so comfortable in Babylon that he started making uh, a spiritual soul ties with these astrologers, magicians, soothsayers, and, and Baptists, and Pentecostals, and Church of God in Christ, and all these, oh God, these denominations, oh, it's a go, oh, he, he, he got with some fellows who knew God. They had a history, a background with God. He didn't go, and look at this, he didn't go to any of the heathen inside that came from, uh, Jerusalem either. See, we think about the heathen that are outside of our denomination, but we never think about the dangers that's tied to being with heathen and idolaters inside of our denomination. We, these churches act like they don't have any heathen inside or idolaters. And I'm not talking about just followers. I'm talking about leaders. This is the reason why these churches cannot afford to do any corporate repentance. It would indict many of their leaders. So look, look at the type of men that Daniel goes with to collaborate with. In the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth. Or about this dream. He went to people that were born again. And I know a lot of y'all don't believe nobody in the Old Testament was born again. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. These guys are born of the spirit of truth. And, you, and, and this story is going to prove it. Look what it says here. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishali, and Azariah, his companion. And they that they would desire the mercies of God of heaven concerning the secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. It don't even look like this decree stopped when he gave Daniel a permission. No, these other guys who didn't say, give me time, they were still being killed. And I'm going to prove that. Then was the secret, okay, verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the, God, the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Oh, verse 19, I'm sorry. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Boy, you better really watch the intercessors you got. You better watch the type of people you have as prayer intercessors. I see a lot of people who got flowery prayers and you know can pray hard, it don't mean that they're born again. It don't mean that they're not backslid. You better watch it. This thing is not based on how well and eloquently and, and, and ugly people get while they're praying and how much they hoop and holler while they're praying. And it's not based, that's not the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is way deeper than hooping and hollering and talking about and saying stuff that you can't even explain to nobody. You better watch it. Daniel, so God shows Daniel a vision. His, his companions intercede. They pray. God shows the vision to Daniel. Verse 20, Daniel answered and said, blessed, he started praising the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. He said, blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. 21. And he changes the time and the seasons and moveth kings and setteth up kings and them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. See, sure the Lord God will do nothing unless he reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophet. Listen to this. Whenever God wants to speak to the whole church, Guess who he's got to use? Prophets. Something that most Christians don't even believe in. They don't believe in prophets if a prophet is not able to go into a trance or a vision or get superhuman strength and turn into the hawk. There's now I know some of you all listening to this, they're like, it's some people there there really is a group of people that believe that in order for you to get a vision, you got to stop breathing for like a half hour or 15 minutes. 
be able to hold out a book 17 pounds in front of you for isn't that carnal minded the bible says in diverse manners and in different ways God revealed his secrets to the servants of the prophet it don't say they all received it, received uh, 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 their messages the same way but there are denominations out there that believe this mess it's satanic doctrine and they love it see one thing about God's people and the closest group of people that's closest to God's people today are Judeo Christians God's people have always hated prophets always you know why because God speaks through them and I'm not talking about false prophets God's people historically have always loved false prophets always the ones that they have a real problem with is the ones that brought deliverance to the whole body and that was true prophets study your Bible it's, it's there look at this so when I go and tell these people that I'm a prophet oh God they, they ask you questions like this do you stop breathing when God show you visions and dreams do you get superhuman strength I said wow everything every example that they, that they think is a true prophet is all stuff based on flesh Woo! what do your flesh do when you get a dream wow this is the work of the Holy Spirit not a work of the flesh or in the flesh it don't matter how the, the Holy Spirit impacts your flesh. It's, it's, it depends on the, how the Holy Spirit impacts and demonstrates the truth. That's what it is. It says, therefore Daniel went in unto Ariok, the king, to, had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went in and said thus unto him, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Stop! Don't kill the wise men of Babylon. I got the answer. You know how you're a child in the, in grammar school and the teacher asks a question and he said, raise your hand. And you're like, ooh, 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 I know it, I know it. Well, that's what Daniel is doing right here. <laughs> Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king. And I will show unto the king the interpretation. Because remember back then when kings gave a decree, they couldn't retract the decree. Then Ariot brought in Daniel before the king in haste. Why? Because they were still killing people. Chopping heads off, killing families, making their homes into sewage dumps. And he said thus unto them, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The, and, and notice this, the guy who's ape is talking about Daniel. Guess what? He didn't come with no biblical research committee. He didn't come with any of the professors of the Bible college. I want to tell you, you know, Christians are all concerned about secret societies and world, the uh, new world orders and Illuminati skull and bones and all this kind of stuff. I want to tell you, one of the most dangerous things to Christians today are Bible colleges. I want to tell you why. You can be a teacher in any of these colleges and you don't have to have any demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You don't even have to be converted. You don't even have to love God. The Bible says the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. When David penned that scripture, guess what he was talking about? He was talking about people that was already in the church. The Old Testament church called Israel why do the fools say in his heart because these are people that say with their mouth that oh 